Well, hello, Dr. Todd here with our Rhino 1010 and Chiropractic First Wellness Lunch and Learn. And the puppy apparently today has a t-shirt she wants to give to me. A little bit late because outside I didn't have a Wi-Fi signal. I was going to do it out by the pool, which would have been appropriate for today's topic because today's topic is to interview with Jim Bob. Howdy. Jim Bob has a very important question for us today. And Jim Bob, why don't you just, let me make sure my hat's in the right direction here. Yes. Jim Bob, why don't you just tell me, what is your question? You know, Dr. Todd, I, <clears throat> I've been wondering for some time, just how much water should a failure drink in a day? Well, Jim Bob, that's a really good question. It's a question that I get all the time. Hi, puppy. Don't step on Jim Bob. Get down, please, puppy. Good girl. So, it's a question I get all the time. And the simple answer, Jim Bob, is a person should drink about half their body weight in ounces of water. You know, that's real easy for me, Dr. Todd, because my day begins out with the uh, first thing when I get up, I have four cups of coffee right away. And there's lots of water in coffee. It's just water poured over coffee, right? You know, so I have my four cups of coffee, and then I have my my Fruit Loops and I pour chocolate milk on my Fruit Loops. But don't worry about any of that stuff, Dr. Todd, because there's a little bit of sugar in the chocolate milk and there's a little bit of sugar I know in the uh, in Fruit Loops. But uh, I don't, when I drink my coffee, I don't use sugar. I use either Splenda or Sweet and Low. I know you're a health-focused guy, Dr. Todd, so I know when I use my Splenda or my Sweet and Low that I'm not getting any more sugar in there. So. You folks out there listening to, you'll know that, you know what I'm talking about. I'm kind of a health enthusiast, you know. Yeah, Jim Bob, that brings up another point. And perhaps uh, we should focus another show on, on artificial sweeteners. And I, I'm pretty sure we will coming up. You bring up a good point there. But that's something also super important, Jim Bob, that water intake should be kept as purely water. So caffeine is a dehydrator. Also, interestingly, some people, I know not necessarily you, oops, I blew up for taking the hat off. Some people, uh, they think that if they're taking in any kind of water in form of tea, in form of coffee, in form of alcohol, that that's giving them water. And caffeine is a powerful dehydrator, and um, also alcohol is a powerful dehydrator. Alcohol actually suppresses a hormone called vasopressin, also known as antidiuretic hormone that stops our kidney from reabsorbing water. That's why you know if, you, if you've ever had any alcohol to drink, you know that you pee real clear and that you dehydrate yourself very, very quickly. So if you're drinking any sort of alcohol, which should be very limited as you all know, drinking any sort of caffeine, drinking any sort of soda beverages, those are not a positive, they're actually a negative for hydration. So a person should drink a third of, excuse me, a half of their body weight in ounces. So these Rhino bottles are 28 ounces. So for me, I weigh about 190 pounds. I need to drink at bare minimum three of these. Now why I say bare minimum is because of this. There is one way to add to hydration that does not include drinking pure water and it's actually fruits and vegetables. So I don't have an exact ratio, but I can tell you that I will drink at least this much during a day but if I have high, high liquid fruits, like oranges, apples, um, watermelons, any kind of melons, I know that actually increases my hydration at a cellular level. And I also eat a lot of vegetables, which contain a lot of water as well. So that's really important. So a person should, so obviously if a person is 140 pounds, they should be drinking 70 ounces of water. So since these are 28 ounces, they should probably just go with at least three of these. Now these are baseline water amounts, by the way. What do you mean by baseline? Well, Jim Bob, I'm glad you asked because Jim Bob, I know you're a roofer and you work super, super hard. You're carrying those 110 pound bundles of shingles up ladders all day long. You're up on roofs in Reading summers, which can be 120 degrees on that roof with that heat radiating off those comp tiles. It's probably 150 degrees where you are all the time. So you're losing tons and tons of water. So the, the half your body weight in ounces is really just a guideline. If you need to know exactly how much to drink, um, the best guide for that to figure out is you should be peeing clearly at a bare minimum of once every two hours. If you're not peeing clearly every two hours, you're dehydrated. 
Now, water is a critical piece to all of our biological functions. As probably everybody knows, we're more than 90% water in our body, so that's super, super important. What people don't know, I see obviously in my practice a lot of joint pain. So when people get spinal pain or elbow pain or things like this, that's often just a cry for water. A great book that I recommend is The Body's Many Cries for Water. Um, what happens is your cartilage, which means your discs, your elbows, all those joints, they're, it's 100% avascular. That means it has no direct blood supply. So if your blood is slightly dehydrated, say 5% dehydrated, their joints like your spine and your elbows are going to be at least 50% dehydrated because they can't even get the water that is available. So that's something really, really important. And if you're doing your spinal warm-ups, which I hope everybody listening does regular spinal exercises, you should drink water 20 to 30 minutes before that. Super, super important. So the, I hope that answers all questions on that. You can always post questions there. If you like what you're hearing, post, click like on there. And uh, that brings up the movie quote for the day. It's technically not a quote, but this is a request slash quote. This movie features the story of a young gal. If I tell you her name, it will spoil the name of the movie. She has, it's an interesting kind of multifaceted movie, but this one part of it, she tries to get her father to travel all over the world. He's older, he's retired, he has money, but he, he will not travel. He has this gnome in his garden. And this gnome, the same exact gnome or, or its likeness is featured on Travelocity website. So if you go there, you'll see what I'm talking about. So she, instead of dragging him along, what she does is she steals the gnome out of his garden and she travels all over the world and she sets the gnome in different places and takes cool pictures like at the Thames River in England or all over the world where she travels and she's, her point is she sends him postcards or pictures with the gnome all over the world implying, Dad, you should, should really be here traveling with me. So the point is this, I have a request. Swing on by Chiropractic First downtown, pick yourself up a Rhino 1010 bottle and go on an adventure and take a picture at that adventure with the Rhino bottle. Send us the picture. So what movie is that for a $10 Roots gift card. What movie am I talking about where the gnome travels all over the world and she takes pictures with it to send to her dad? But I have a request. Please do that. Go by and swing by and pick up one of these bottles. Drink lots and lots and lots of water out of it. And don't buy bottled water, by the way. Do not buy bottled water. There is no proof that it is healthier for you. And we are putting massive, massive amounts of empty plastic bottles all over our environment and it is not leaving a good legacy to our children and our children's children. So get one of these, go take pictures in super cool adventurous places at the top of mountains, at the Thames River in Denmark, wherever you are, and we look forward to seeing where you come up with these pictures. So go out and drink more water, hydrate your body, it's free money. Go have a beautiful day.